Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm going to share a summer vacation layout with you and show you how to create balance with bold complementary colors. I can't wait to share this project with you. I'm working with the Travelogue Limitless Kit from Not Just For Boys Kit Club. This is such a wonderful kit filled with vintage like prints with a few neutral colors and simple hues. The kit is also packed full of embellishments and ephemera. There are some memorabilia bags, foam stickers, alphas, puffy clouds, and ephemera bits. As I create today's project, I'll bring in a few more supplies. In the description below, you will find a list of those and a link to the kit that I'm using today. The photos on this page were taken in southern Colorado near a famous landmark. Most of the soil there is a rust red color and the landmark is built from stone and wrought iron. So this foundation's paper and softer burlap like pattern I'm selecting are going to bring out the colors in those photos. After creating my grid pattern with the photos, I realized that the burlap pattern was a little too light, so I'm layering a rust colored matte pattern behind the photos. Blue is a great complement to this rust color, and the people in the photos just happen to be wearing orange and blue. So I'm going to bring a little of that color in with the ephemera bits. The Everywhere Ephemera Pack is filled with background patterns, maps, charts, ledger pieces, and all sorts of labels that go well with the other items in this kit. I like layering the larger pieces behind my photo frames to bring more patterns to my design. When I adhere these in place, I'll trim them down to lessen the bulk, but for now I just want to get an idea of where everything is going to sit. To finish off my grid design, I'm adding a little notebook die cut near the top photo. At this point, I don't know if I'll use it for journaling or for the title. Now that I have a rough idea of where all these pieces are going to sit, I'm going to bring in a little texture paste. That rust color pattern is a great background for my photos, but I feel like I need to build some sort of frame or buffer around all my photo layers. I'm going to do this with a brick pattern and some grit paste. The grit paste is opaque, so I'm going to add a little color to it by mixing in some ink. This color is similar to the color of the rock walls in the photos, and the grit texture will mimic their surface. As I add the paste, I am not filling in the brick completely. I want a few of these to be partial bricks or broken bricks and have a rougher edge to them. This just makes your background stenciling appear more organic and less structured, which is the look that I'm going for on this page. I've added most of the brick at the top and a little bit on either side of where my pattern layers are going to sit. Once I have finished adding the paste, I'm going to store the leftovers in a small embellishment jar. By doing this, I can add more of the texture paste later on if needed without having to worry about color matching. So I've allowed that paste to dry and now I can bring in those ephemera and pattern paper layers I created. I have roughed up the edges on these with an edge distressor and added some stitching to a few of the pieces. I find that it's best to add stitching to individual pieces or two to three layers of paper instead of attempting to run all six layers through my sewing machine. It does take a little bit of pre-planning, but it prevents my machine from getting bound up in all the layers. Creating grid designs with clusters of photos and ephemera is one of the easier types of layouts to create. I think the hardest part is deciding on the size of photos that are going to work within the space. The larger one on this page is three and a quarter inches square, and the two smaller ones are two inches by three inches. This sizing left just enough room for that little card at the top next to the larger photo. With so much of the rust color on the page, I need to bring in more items with blue. Creating balance with complementary colors can be challenging, especially when both colors are so bold and vibrant. 
one of the simplest ways to create balance with bold complementary colors is to use them in unequal proportions. On this page, I want to bring in more blue to help tone down the intensity of the orange hues and create a harmonious balance. You can also create balance by adding neutral colors to the mix. On this page, I'm adding black, white, tan, and gray to offset the boldness of the blue and orange colors. You might also notice that I'm using lighter and darker versions of those bold hues. This helps to soften the intensity and create a more subtle balance. While I finish adding items to the page, I would love it if you tap that subscribe button and let me know that you're new here. If you're already a subscriber, go ahead and let me know that you're enjoying today's project by tapping that thumbs up icon or leaving a comment below. I always love knowing which technique you're going to try today. So I decided to place my title near that top photo and bring in more of the blue colors. And now I'm going to add some florals to the page. And most of the items on this page have harsh lines and these little florals are going to help soften them. I have also brought in some horizontal pieces with labels, phrases, and those chevrons to balance out all the vertical elements. Balancing horizontal and vertical elements is key if you want to create a more natural looking scrapbook layout. Horizontal and vertical lines will guide your eye through the design and create directional flow to the focal points on the page. To finish off my layout, I'm going to bring in one more large horizontal piece at the top. This is a product strip from one of the pattern papers that I plan on stitching in place. And then I'll add this little label and another icon up here at the top. I'm going to finish this up and then I'll share the completed page with you. Here is the layout that I shared with you today. At the top, I added some zigzag stitching, that foam label, and an acrylic arrow that points to the focal point on the page. I also added another floral element on the right side of this layout to balance out the weight, and I added some twine and a circular safety pin to the tag. This is a page I created for my sister, so she'll be able to add journaling on the tag and below the photos when she receives this page. The travelogue kit from Not Just For Boys has some bold color patterns, which can seem a bit overwhelming if you're unsure how to balance them. On this page, I chose a complementary color scheme with two vibrant colors and was able to share with you how to soften those hues with neutral colors. I hope that today's project inspired you to give a few of these techniques a try. If you are one who enjoys pinning photos to inspiration boards, I have added photos of this layout on the Not Just For Boys Kit Club blog and on my website for you to use. If you would like more ideas for using this kit, you can join the Not Just For Boys Kit Club community on Facebook and see even more designs. I want to thank you for joining me for another scrapbook project. If you have any questions about this project or the supplies listed below, feel free to post that in the comments. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.